What is going on everybody? Today this is going to be a type of fishing guide for Albion Online. I saw previous content creators putting their own spin or twist on this, saying how they made millions of silver fishing roads of Avalon, or straight up running black zones, yada yada yada. It's just a bunch of bullshit to me personally. It's definitely not tailored or suited for the solo players of Albion Online, or the small time guilds. These people fishing in an Avalon oftentimes have like, uh, a three man just protecting them so that they can actually do it in peace or they're ending up just really risking it all and getting slotted by enemy guilds and shit like that so this guide will definitely provide you a safe and efficient way to actually fish um, it might not be the most silver that is possible to make using this tactic but it is definitely up there I think the Overall take that you'll see after we go through everything and talk about everything here is going to be around like 600k, I think is what I last clocked it at. Um, again, this is just on the main account. If we looked over, because I do have a secret account with all max gathering stats already, and I was kind of using that as like a comparison to see and get an idea of what the exact scaling features are. Uh, this includes anything from seaweed drops to the fish yields, as well as the decoration drops, and we'll get more into that in a second here. Um, something to make note of at first, this does require a little bit of a setup of sorts, and what this means is you will need access to at least one private island. Those of you who know me as a player, I already have access to 25 total private islands myself. And for me, that allows me to just completely fish in an infinite loop. But you will need access to one. The sweet spot that you want to be at is three to four islands. And the reason for this is your islands start off with a total of six fishing pools. And we'll go over here real quick, just so you guys can get an idea in case you're not familiar with these. These are what inhabit your island right here. They have four to five fish per pool, and you actually have six of them dotted around your island. You have one here, one here, one over here, another here, and then over here, and then one right here where we're at. So you actually have all these dotted around your island. These can include the tier one and tier two fish. We'll go over here so you guys can actually see it for yourselves. And here's your two tier two fish. And this is the tier 1 fish that you can get. Now, of course, these are obviously affected by your gathering yield. You can also get seaweed from fishing on your private islands as well, and which is currently affected by your gathering yield as well. I'm wearing T6, as you can see right now. And the common seaweed drops that I can expect to get from fishing at tier 6 is 2 to 3. Now, if we move over to the tier 8 account, my max seaweed drop is 5, and my lowest that I've hit is 3. Excuse me. And then if we look at tier 3 up to tier 5, the uh, fishing stats for that was 1 to 2 seaweed. Um, tier 3 through tier 5, the chances of getting seaweed is a 1 to 6 ratio, I believe it was. And that's just one out of every six casts that you do, you can probably expect to get some seaweed. Now, with tier six, that actually increases, um, and well, I guess increases or drops, however you want to consider it or call it. But um, it drops down to a one out of four. So this means every fourth cast of the fish that you get, you're going to be getting seaweed. And again, like I said, the it's going to be a two or three seaweed after that fourth cast. Now with level 100 with your T8 fishing rod, that number is going to go down, unfortunately not by much, it's only going to go down to a one out of three. Which, I mean, is still good regardless, but I personally would kind of like it if it went down to a one out of two. Uh, since it is, in fact, T8, and that's the top that you can get. But the difference in seaweed drops versus Tier 6 to Tier 8 is good enough. It's tolerable. 
Um, so with that being said, we have that. Now, something that I've seen other people start doing, I personally immediately just picked up on this, was they were talking about how you can eat the fish um, and gain the fame for that to help you power level your fishing. However, for me, it's become a little bit apparent. These are the only ones that you actually need to care about. The striped mackerel, which is your tier 2 fish, these offer 15 fame every time you eat a single one. And you can see right here we have 447 of those. So right now, that, that's a couple K fame right there for fishing in general. Um, and as far as the herring goes, I've actually found out that the best way to use these is simply going to the butcher and turning them into chopped fish in order to make the special sauce, or the fish sauce as it's called. Because that is another primo item. It is sought after by all the cooks in Albion Online. It is highly profitable. Um, I think the tier one fish sauce that you can expect to get the first tier is going to be like around 3k to 5k and it obviously scales from there. Uh, the second tier of fish sauce, there's three tiers. Level two is around like, I think, 25 to 50k. And then the final tier is around like uh, 250 to 300. Again, I'll have to double check the prices on that. I don't know because due to the market, it fluctuates all the damn time. So I can't tell you for sure, but that's what I keep the herring for. It is definitely more profitable to just go ahead and hold them instead of trying to use them. Because again, this is 7 fame versus 15. So this one alone literally gives you double what this one is. So it's better to just waste your time clicking and eating these instead of just trying to use both of them. And it helps you out making silver in the long run anyway. Now... As mentioned before, another thing to take into consideration, if we go over to this chest here, is the decorations. These are all farmable on your private islands. Whether or not this was an intentional design by SBI or an accidental one, I don't know. I would like to think it's intentional. But this right here is how you can also make some decent silver. Uh, 268k just in these alone. Now, if you're a decoration hunter, obviously this is your go-to, uh, especially items like these. These are extremely beautiful trees. They're sought after by most of the players, including like these island... I don't even know what the exact term for them, but they're just hermits that do not care about anything else in the game except for how their islands look. Um, so obviously, stuff like this, again, these are you can literally fish these out of the sea on your private islands. And these three right here, 25k silver, you have 15.5. These right here, little flower vases, there's 17 of these. I can get 42.7k silver. Like, all of these are just going to be extra profit for you. Um, and the ratio for decoration drops on your island that I found out is you get two decoration drop chances per island that you are on. So that means if you go fishing on three islands, you can expect to get six decoration drops. These decorations, too, are in fact uh, affected by your fishing yield. So however high your experience is for fishing, that's what you can expect to get. Because um, again, it does work the same with seaweed. I don't have the exact numbers on these because unfortunately there's a lot more coding that goes into determining the drops for all of these as far as like percentages go and everything. So unlike the seaweed, I cannot give you a fair, like detailed explanation of what drops you will expect. The only thing that I can say is that through a lot of testing on my own side here is that you will be guaranteed two drops of decorations. However, this can be affected um, by... A, another in-game factor, I can't exactly recall what the exact title for it is, but there's an in-game factor that while you're fishing on your private islands, will also consider Tier 1 equipment as part of the drops that you can get. Um, so this could be like a Tier 1 soldier's helmet or something like that, aka worthless or useless piece of shit. So that is something else that you'll have to take into effect. It's unclear whether or not it actually cuts into how many decoration drops that you have. 
Um, Because again, I've seen sometimes it will only give you one decoration drop after you encounter this on whatever island you're fishing on, and sometimes it won't. So again, it just seems to be another chance drop or whatever. So there's also this. Again, you have to consider this in 268k. And then, of course, you have these right here, which, I mean, if you choose to sell them, that's 84.6k. And then if you choose to sell these, that's another 67. So you're already well over 150k right there, too. So right now, we're over 400k total. And that's just off of this. Now, with the seaweed salads here, this is another item you can craft inside of Albion. It increases your fishing speed by 10% for 30 minutes. A very helpful item, especially when you're just simply going through island after island and fishing. Uh, your seaweed drops are, in fact, like I said, they are determined by your fishing experience. So you do have to take that into consideration. Right now, I'm getting uh, two to three seaweed every one out of four fishing casts. And this obviously adds up over time. I think every... I popped one seaweed salad, and within that 30 minutes of fishing, I had made 40 to 50 seaweed. I think it was like 51 or something by the time I got done. So that's a profit of 30 to 40 seaweed right there, minus the 10, because you have to use the 10 to make another uh, seaweed salad, excuse me. So you can take, again, like I said, these herring and then the extra seaweed that you get, if you don't want to sell the seaweed as it is, which is 1,700 silver per, then you can take that and this herring, turn the herring into chopped fish, and then use the seaweed and go make the special fish sauce to actually increase your profits. Again, just the basic fish sauce is around 3 to 5k silver right now. Uh, that'll probably change here after the video, or it won't. So go ahead and try testing out for yourself and uh, cashing in on that. Now you'll see right here these journals, and I was quite frankly just irritated when I heard what these content creators were suggesting for the players to do. Um, they hit the nail on the head with the power leveling the fisherman contracts and then turning those and selling them. Like these three right now, they're almost 100k silver. Um, personally, I'm just kind of sitting on these and holding them. I already sold like a bunch of other fishing contracts off. So I'm just going to wait and see if I want to actually upgrade these or not. But as far as the journals go, tier two journal is honestly dog shit. It is horrible. It's a waste of time and it is fucking useless. Um, 720 fame in order to fill this versus the 1360 fame it takes to fill a T3 journal. And the reason why T3 is better than Tier 2 in this case is, first off, the drop rates. Now, Tier 2, it has a 0 to 7. You have the striped mackerel, common herring, the common rud right here, and then seaweed. That's a 0 to 7 for each of those four fish that you can get after turning in a filled Tier 2 fisherman's journal. Tier 3, on the other hand, you can cash this into your laborer. And it will go, instead of 0 to 7, it'll also be 0 to 15. And this will include a large variety of the Tier 3 fish, including clams, which are just going to be helpful both profit-wise or if you just choose to eat them. Uh, the Tier 3 clams offer 75 fame per clam that you consume, and the Tier 5 clams will actually offer 150. So that's pretty much you're making your money you're making your money worth and then some using the T3 journal instead of wasting time filling this tier 2 journal. And the same goes honestly for the T4 journal. Uh 223 fame in order to fill this. So you're essentially doubling your work almost for the cost it takes to fill a journeyman's uh fisherman journal versus the T4. And the rewards for this T4 are not different at all. At all. Like, you have access to the T4 fish, but they're quite frankly not good, in my opinion. They don't offer any higher fame drops either if you consume them, so there's not real, really any incentive at all as far as gathering them goes. And you can see right here, this is one full Fisherman's Journal, sells for 20.2k silver, 
if we go ahead and split this up, this is 12.5. So again, you're almost having to double your fame that you gather up for this T3 journal for this T4, and you're not even making double the silver that it's worth. So again, like right now, if this was 25k, then sure, one could argue that it might be worth. But as of right now, it's definitely not. Like, you are much better off just gathering up your T3 journals and then giving those to your laborers. And on top of that, the T3 journals, they give a considerable amount of EXP, too. So you're not necessarily losing out on anything. And uh, I think there's an actual uh, graph to detail how much EXP. I think there's one on the wiki for Albion Online. I don't know. I'll probably see it. I'll include a clip of that in here somewhere if I do. Um, but again, it's not necessarily that much different. Now, as far as the fishing bait goes, like I said, I have access to 25 private islands, and those all have maxed five farm plots per. So earthworms, to me, is definitely not a problem. Um, and I can say this right now, if you are ever considering, this is for, for both your season and new players, if you are ever considering going for tier 5 fishing bait, do not fucking bother. I cannot stress this enough. Do not do it. It is a waste of silver, and it is a waste of your earthworms. The reason is, right now, tier 1 fish bait offers a 50% bite speed of fish. Tier 3, as you can see right here, increases bite speed of fish by 125%. Tier 1 costs 1 to Earthworm, tier, five costs, or, uh, tier 3 costs 5. If you go to a tier 5 fishing bait, yes, it has 250% bite speed of fish, but it also costs five, or 25 Earthworms. So instead of just creating the tier 3 and getting the 125 for 5, you're now seriously wasting your Earthworms to get 250 for 10 charges, because again, the charges is the same for all fish baits. Uh, tier 1, 3, and 5 only adds 10 charges of the fish bait that you have. But the main takeaway here is this one costs 5, tier 5 costs 25. So I don't think I need to go too much deeper into this. You can kind of do the math for yourself, and it's definitely not worth it. Um, the only reason I use the fancy fish bait here is just because I do, in fact, like the bite speed. Um, and again, I have access to fuck tons of earthworms, so for me, it's just extra uh, speed. It's nice to have. It's not needed, though, however. Um, moving on from that now, we'll take a look at how exactly I've been making this much silver just by fishing on these private islands of mine. Um, and the thing about it is, like I said, you can do this with one private island, but the main thing is you have three to four islands. That's going to be your golden ticket or your pass to making a lot of silver and being able to fish, efficiency, bleh, fish efficiently without any kind of you know reason to stop or intrusion. Now, what I'm about to say, we're going to go ahead and call this an action. Actions in this game are you, for example, let's say you leave from your island. You then go to your city. That is one action. You are crossing in to another part of Albion Online server. So that is going to be one action here. So you'll need a total of three of these actions in order to forcibly respawn all of these fishing pools. Again, whether or not this was an intentional game design or if it's an actual bug that has just managed to fly under the radar, I have no fucking idea. But all I know is I'm going to abuse it regardless. I don't quite frankly care. But as far as actions go, like I said, going from your island to the city, that is one action. You then can go into your market, it can go to the bank, You, as long as you just do not go back to your island. You can leave the city, etc. Do whatever. You, but you have to do that, and then you can go back to your island. What this will do is it will forcibly respawn all of these pools of fish that you have. 
So like I said, if you have one private island, you can keep forcibly respawning all these fish around it, which just gives you access to go back to what you were doing. Now, with the three to four islands, obviously, you eliminate those because, again, you're crossing, you're performing these actions, but you're still going to all the other islands. So you can fish pretty much indefinitely until your rod breaks. Um, something else to take away, too, here is if we go into our guild challenge, you can see right here, I've almost farmed up one million and gotten to level four just by myself here. I think I started fishing about five days ago. And this was somewhere around the neighborhood of 700k-ish, give or take. So right now you can already see, just by the fishing alone, and then of course the general uh, farming, we've already hit 50k challenge points. So you might ask, how many challenge points are you getting per fish? The striped mackerel is 15, and this does not go up or down depending on your yield. The only thing that affects whether or not you get the 15 challenge points is if you have the premium, which, I mean, even if you don't have premium, I would have to guess you get 12, if I'm doing my math right on that. If not, I'm sorry. You'll have to do that for yourself. But for the striped mackerel here, you get 15. The regular herring is 11. So each one of these is providing you the challenge points. So theoretically speaking, if you decided to no-life the fishing, and if you made a guild for just yourself, you could farm up the siphoned energy rewards to get off this. Uh, right now, if we go into mine, then you can see right here, I'm already at 146 myself. Which, of course, that just, if you're not going to do anything else with your siphoned energy, then congrats, that's free profit and free silver for you again. So... To sum this up, you can literally just free farm your silver and fish away without having to go into the Black Zones or the Roads of Avalon. Uh, something to take note of, too, here, as you can see, like I said, I started fishing. This account was literally level zero, fisher. Never touched a fishing rod before in its life. Uh, unlike the other gathering account I have, which is already maxed fisherman. So five days ago, this was level zero. I'm already at level 38, and Fisherman Specialist is at 18. Now, I did make the mistake here, and I actually turned on Auto Learn for the Fishing Specialist. I learned the hard way. Do not do this. You, do, you literally do not need Fishing Specialist. If you are just now starting out, the only reason you should be spending learning points on Fishing Specialist is if you're already, like, Tier 6 or you're already maxed. There's no other reason. Oh, excuse me real quick. Ah, okay. Because again, your main goal, your only objective and purpose when you're starting out fishing is just to get this maxed to 100, however possible. For me, I've just been using it passively. Again, with premium, you get 20 learning points per day, and you can see right here, just to... Like, just right now, it costs five to get this leveled up to the next level. It costs seven. And this is with progress on the bar right here. Without progress, five. With progress, seven. So ultimately, you'll be wasting your learning points by trying to actually auto-learn the fishing specialist, which is just going to slow your progress down for fishermen. So that's why I say, again, I cannot stress this enough you will be 100% better off going and maxing out your fishermen than you will be trying to max out your fishing specialist. Um, that was just my personal mistake that I ended up making, and I've regretted it ever since, quite frankly. It's a lot better off just going for maxed fishermen. Um, again, if we go through and take a look at the profits here, like I said, I'm making about, let's go ahead and pull up a calculator here real quick. And I'm not going to bother trying to sort OBS here to try and track the calculator down. But if we go in and we say 30 seaweed times 1700, or my bad, sorry, uh, 1700 times 30, we're going to be getting around 
Come on. Or two. You're going to be making 51k silver off of that. The items in the chest right there is another 268k, just as is. So already we're at 319k silver. If you took the fish over there that we got from our previous excursion, you'd see 84.6, so 85k roughly, and then 67k. We take that and plug that in. And then 67k. And we're at 471,000 silver. And that's if we sold it. Now, again, this does not, we're not going to be able to include the, uh, ah, excuse me, the fishing sauce, as again, I don't have the accurate numbers for that. But let's just theoretically say that we took, like we were saying, all these common herring, turned them into chopped fish. And then we added the seaweed. So you would be instead making 3 to 5k per special fish sauce. So again, you're likely, I was lowballing this and saying around 600k. But if you do this consistently for like, say, a couple hours a day, you're more likely going to be making 700k plus an hour doing this. Keep in mind, you're not having to worry about whether or not you're going to die in the black zones or roads to Avalon. So the cost of your gear is now nothing. You have no worries. You can farm up your journals here. You can catch the seaweed that you need. You can also, while you're at it, farm up laborers and fishermen contracts and then turn and sell those. Because again, this is an extra 100k right here, just with these three alone. So again, you can do all of this, and you'll be making upwards of 700 plus K at no cost to you, just as long as you have the basic gear. So with that being said, just so that this video doesn't get too long, I hope that you all learned something today, and I hope that you guys will actually be able to start making some serious silver without having to worry about if you're going to die or not. And yeah, have a good day. Be safe. Peace out.